Hello, I'm Lynn Jair, also known as Redgrave Jones. Welcome to my channel. Today, I am going to give you your second piano class. This is Piano 102. I previously released a video called Piano 101, where I talked about the five things that you need to know to start playing piano, like right now. So if you have never played piano, go back, watch that video and then come back here. I'm going to pick up on where that video left off. Uh, that video ended with me showing you a simple way to play the song Mercy by Shawn Mendes. And in talking about that song, I'm going to start with talking about triads. So when I showed you how to play that song, I told you with your left hand to play one note which would be a G uh, while you did essentially what's called an arpeggio oh wait it starts sorry it starts in uh, E minor so you are playing an E with your first finger of your left hand the E below middle C and you are playing an E minor chord in your right hand but I had you arpeggiate it which is just it's a fancy way to say play the chord one note at a time. And then we moved to G. Then we moved to B minor. And so that's just a super simple way to play the song. It's just one part of the song, but it's mostly just those chords. So I didn't really go into what exactly these chords are what a triad is. Triad is simply a three note chord. Think about tricycle, uh, triangle, uh, three things, right? So yeah, triad is a three note chord. And in this case, there's different kinds of triads. You have major triads, minor triads, you could have a diminished triad, you can have an augmented triad. Um, we are just dealing with major and minor triads. So the first thing you need to know is that a triad, the first note of the triad is called the root. It's usually the name of the triad. So right now I'm playing a G chord, G triad. So G, I'm playing with my first finger of my right hand. That is the root. The third of the triad is the B. I'm playing that with my third finger and um, then the third note I'm playing is called the fifth, which I'm using my pinky to play a D. And the reason why it's called the one, the three, and the five, and not say the one, the two, and the three, is because these numbers um, are um, associated with the scale that the chord comes from. So this is music theory stuff, which I adore, and I'm going to be having more videos on. Um, but for today, just know that you have the one, the three, and the five. So initially, when I taught you this song, uh, like I said, I kept it pretty simple. Right? So we build from here with this style of playing, which is improvisational, right? that note. So I'm just improvising, but this is where it all comes from, is from the chord. So the chord will tell me what notes will sound good. Let's talk about the, let's talk about the left hand. So you're just playing the root of the chord in the left hand, right? B for the B minor chord, A for the A major chord, E for the E minor chord, G for the G major chord, B for the B minor chord, and A for the major chord. So a couple things we could do with the left hand. Sometimes you could play, There's, you know, those rules are meant to be broken, but what sounds nice in the left hand are things like the root and the fifth. So I might 
for the first chord, the E minor chord, I will play E and B. Then I'm going to go to the G and D, B and F sharp, A and E. Now let's see what that sounds like with the simple pattern in the right hand. So it already gives it a little more meat. So with the right hand, so I decided already I like that A with the, with the E minor. Now there's like theoretical reasons why, okay, music theory simply explains why we like what we hear. It explains why things sound the way they do and usually why things are either pleasing or, why or not. So I know that this A is nice. I know it's the fourth of the chord and the fourth often sounds nice. So I could start with the, like, sorry, I keep forgetting where I'm at. So I did with my right hand, E, G, B, the simple arpeggio. And then I teased this. It's a little uh, advanced if you haven't been playing long. I played A and E at the same time. And now I'm gonna s switch to G. Now, notice I did something a little different with the G in my left hand. This also sounds nice. I've got a octave, which is simply, uh, you start with the one note, in this case the root, and then the octave is the next note, either above or below. And I'm the fifth. Always sounds nice. So normally I wouldn't solo down that low, but it kind of sounded nice. Okay, so what else can you do? You can change the shape of the triad. We are going to talk about inversions. <coughs> inversions are so important because without inversions, check this out. I'm kind of jumping all over the place. Now even if to go to B, I could jump here or down here. Sorry down here, but it's a bit of a jump, right? But if I play with what's called an inversion, I'm just gonna show you and then I'll explain it. So an inversion is uh, playing a chord, but in a different position. So this is root position, I'm playing I'm playing E, G, B. So if I play, I'm going to, with an inversion, you simply move the E to the top. So now I've got E, sorry, G, B, E. That is called first inversion. Mm -hmm. Now I could switch from here. go to my A major and so you'll notice this is a different shape for the A major and I am playing an A uh, sorry an E A C sharp this is what we're gonna do with the right hand we're gonna start E minor root position then we're gonna play D G and second inversion so second inversion is when I have the G on top, but I'm going to move this B on top. That's second inversion. So I've got E minor, G, second inversion. Now look, I barely have to move for this B minor. D, F sharp, B, C sharp, E, 
A. So this is the next step. Play around with octave. So you could just do an octave by itself too. It still sounds cool. I hope this video was helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. If you like this video, please like it. Uh, and then also please subscribe. It means so much to me and the algorithm. And I do appreciate having you here so much. So thank you very much. Have a great rest of the day or night or wherever you are. Bye.